good evening, my dearly beloved sisters and brothers. Uh, we are on the last chapter of Eat Your Way to um, Health and Life. Um, but uh, we have another week for the final word and all the the resource and then the yung mga questions. So hindi pa to yung final closure ng book. Um, chapter 12, Pursue the Healer. Napaka, ano, napakagandang... Um, chapter actually um, I encourage all of you to ano, to to go back and read it again and again and again yung favorite natin na uh, Luke 24 nandyan yung road to Emmaus which is um, chock full um, kailangang pigain ang dami nating ma, ano mo, dami, ang dami pang pwedeng ano, pag-usapan at uh, revelation na i-discuss okay so I would like to start with this yung Psalms 13 kasi when we talk about um, uh, a person who is in a um, very good relationship and an excellent relationship who knows the divine in divine relationship it's um, King David you know that in Psalms 13 sabi niya, he's very very um, uh, honest he's very transparent to tell the Lord that he's very disappointed that he is um somehow perplexed and somehow uh, tired of waiting. Sabi niya, how long, oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? So this is King David, ah. How long shall I take counsel in my soul, having sorrow in my heart daily? How long will my enemy be exalted over me? I think um, uh, th this is something which should not, uh, we should not take as a, uh, but parang ganun si David, but parang sinusugbitan niya si Lord. Because David is coming from a from a standpoint of relationship. Eh. Sabi ko kanina, he knows the the ano, the way to the divine. He knows how he knows that um whatever it is, the Lord accepts him and he the Lord in fact not only loves him but the Lord likes him very much. So you can see that in the next um in the next um uh, verses, sabi niya uh uh, sabi, so have you gone through that? So it's, it's tayo, no? Have you gone through that? Have you had this in your heart? Or have you had this episode ako a lot? And you feel like God has put you aside? Di ba? Parang, parang ang tagal. So, um, praise the Lord kasi he, the Holy Spirit continues to reveal to us um, things concerning Himself and things about His heart that, hey, I am with you. No matter what comes to, to you, no matter what life this brings you, I am with you. I will never forsake you nor leave you. So immediately, si David, after yung mga phrases here, sabi niya ganyan, dun sa, ano, dun sa uh, verse 3, Consider and hear me, O Lord my God, enlighten my eyes. So makikita mo dito, so ko, hmm, merong ano, no? Merong talaga, ano, alam talaga ni David yung, ano, yung um, the, way to, the, way, the way of the divine. First is enlighten my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Lest my enemies say I have prevailed against him. Let those who trouble me rejoice when I am moved. But, so after praying for the opening of his eyes, so, so makikita natin yung pattern. So whenever we are feeling all of this, the, the prayer is actually, the, the prayer that makes all the difference is verse 3. Consider and hear me, O Lord my God enlighten my eyes there is no problem with uh because the solution is already there the only thing that needs to be adjusted that needs to be calibrated is our seeing so enlightening our eyes so sabi niya ang ganun, after after yung prayer dun sa three and four but i have trusted in your mercy mercy doon is hased my grace my heart shall rejoice in your salvation and your salvation doon is yeshua so, alam natin yung Yeshua, right? Yeshua is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, right? So, the Hebrew there, so you are, you are, ibig sabihin nito, when you have this, when you have this um, utterances, you're going to, you have a, you have the right posture. When you don't give up trusting in the grace of God, because by His grace, by His grace, for sure, because it is already given, it's just a matter of manifestation. The manifestation will come. So, ang sabi nga ni David, I have trusted in your mercy. Hindi ba niya nakikita yung manifestation na? In the natural. 
My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because He has dealt bountifully with me. So yung posture niya is a so is is a heart of gratefulness. It's a it's a confession of thanksgiving. Kahit hindi pa niya nakikita yung manifestation. Hallelujah. So which brings to us, kasi sabi nga natin kanina, um, there is a David is a master of not only sabi ko kanina relationship. But it seems that he has this revelation of communion. Because there's a lot, there's a, I know, ah, there's a difference between between having a uh, yung relationship. Ito yung parang yung title, eh, but communion. It's it's something which is active. It's something which is dynamic. It's something which is two way. So ganon ganon yung ano ganon yung posture ni King David. So the very word communion, and this is directly lifted from the book speaks of the relationship our lord desires to have to have for us the apostle paul wrote wrote in um first corinthians 10 16 to 18 the cup of blessing which we bless so yung yung relationship natin is parang yung yung community hindi parang the 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 adjective the description to our relationship is communion Yon, yun yung yun yung gusto kong i, i, i ano. So it, it, it's not like uh, I'm in a relationship, but what is the description of the relationship? So ito yung the, the very word communion speaks of our yung yung des describing the relationship that we have with our Lord Jesus Christ. The cup of blessing which we bless is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we Though many are one bread and one body, for, for we all partake of that one bread. Observe Israel after the flesh. Are not those who eat the sacrifices partaker of the altar? So um, they were talking about, as uh, Sipo was talking about the time when the Israelites offered um, sacrifices to the golden calf. So when they, sacrifice, when they sacrifice all those things to the golden calf, they were partakers of the of the uh, curses which what which was brought about by the golden calf. So tayo, now, since we are in Christ, we are partakers of his death and his resurrection. Yun yung communion. So the word communion, use, the, the word used for communion in the original Greek is koinonia, meaning fellowship. So makita natin, there's a four pillars, right? It's really very important na uh, kung pag nare-redors ka, the naredors ka and napapelors ka, it's actually um, the answer is uh, fellowship and breaking of the bread. It also has the idea of an intimate participation like the intimacy of a husband and a wife. Um, sharing with each other when they say and do things no one else is privy to. So whenever you partake of the communion, it's a time, it's a time of intimacy between you and the Lord. It's your it's your um, love break. It's your, kumbaga, kumbaga sa may honeymoon, ito yung pinaka-importanting part ng honeymoon. Right? So, it's a time you set aside to remember your heavenly bridegroom who loved you so much, he gave, him, he gave himself up for you. It's a time uh, for you to run to him and lose yourself in his presence and let his perfect love wash, wash you, cast out every fear that may be eating Maybe eating at you. So, hindi lang kasi I used to have this um, concept na communion is uh, per se a provision for healing. No. It, communion is is uh, much more than that. Communion transcends actually um, uh, much more than yung provision for healing. But it's for everything. For our provision. Ano mang may problema ba tayo? Then let's, let's, let's remember him because um, in, in the broken body of Jesus is our provision. Hallelujah. So, as we take time to commune with Him and to remember Him through the Holy Communion, do you know what happens? We became, we become, we become an intimate participator of the benefits of the body and the blood. Thirtyfold, sixtyfold, eightyfold, hundredfold. You may not see it in in one go, but it, it, it you become an in, uh, intimate participator. Meaning something is happening. Hallelujah. So just as those who ate the sacrifices became become partakers of the altar, 1 Corinthians 10, 18, when you eat the bread and the cup, drink the cup, you become a partaker of all Jesus accomplished at the cross. So how do we how do we now execute Luke 15, 31, diba? Where, san, 
uh, you are always with me, sabi ni Lord, diba? sabi ni Ama. And everything I have is yours. How do we execute? Parang yung insurance, diba? how do we get it all? Through Holy Communion. Right? So, ganda. So, as you drink the cup, that is communion, communion with and sharing in the blood of Christ. 1 Corinthians 10, 16 in the NASB. So, as you eat of the broken bread, you are participating in the body of Christ that was broken for you. Again, as you eat of the broken broken bread, you are participating in the body of Christ that was broken for you. Hallelujah. So it's it's really most powerful. So, paano naman kasi para ma-dispel na tong ano ha? Kasi meron tayong mga natutunan dati na, oh, you know what? If you sin, you can lose your fellowship. You know what? Uh, because of the blood of Jesus, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, you cannot, you cannot lose your fellowship with God. There are some Christians who believe that you can lose fellowship with God when you sin. And you need to confess your sin to God and obtain forgiveness to become righteous again. They claim that your relationship with God is not broken when you sin, but fellowship with Him is. So you need to confess your sin to restore fellowship. It's not true. Believing that your fellowship with God is broken when you sin will affect your and my ability to come boldly to His throne of grace and to receive from Him. In reality, both the words relationship and fellowship share the same Greek root word koinonia. This means that even if you fail, relationship and fellowship with God are not broken. Why? Because your sins and failures have all been paid for at the cross. How can you ever lose your righteousness in Christ when it is based entirely on his perfect work and not your imperfection. It is not based on yours and my performance. It is based on his finished work. So, Lord, if there's things that I'm not believing right, please show me. So, ito na. May mga prayer tayong ganito. Lord, ano bang gagawin ko? Diba? Meron ba ba akong dapat na, may, ano ba yung area na hindi ako nagbibilib? Please show me. Yan. It's not about doing something more. Not not uh not um a laundry list of something that you do parang yung kasi there's a very thin line of the posture of doing and posture of <coughs> of really knowing and of really believing and knowing. So parang kinuwento ko sa inyo dati na siko nako ngayong araw to I I ano I, I, I really want to pray. I really want to pray. Nothing wrong, but you know what? Um it is not your prayer. It is not your fasting. It is the Lord. It's His finished work. Hallelujah. So, God, show me what I can do. Yan, yung mga question, di ba? Even though we pray, Lord, what can we do? But the thing is, but the thing is that it's about seeing more. Kanina, di ba, yung prayer ni David, um, open my eyes, enlighten me. So now, for, for us to see, Right? For, for, for us to see and therefore you can come boldly to Him and ask. You know that prayer is simply asking from Him. Right? Hindi yung, hindi yung begging, begging. But it's it's coming to the Father. It's coming to the Father with with, with this um, revelation, with this, uh, with a picture. We, hindi, hindi nga picture. He doesn't want us to have a picture. He, 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 wants, he wants us to see Him as our good Father. He wants us to see Him as our Abba who doesn't withhold things from us, but is more than happy and more than excited to freely give to us because everything that, is to, everything that he has is ours. So the, the, the thing is, the, the prayer of David is really, really um, um, applicable to us. It's about seeing more. It's not about doing more. It's about seeing more. Seeing more. So may our eyes, may my eyes be open. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know that you may know three things the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saint, saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us which he wrought us in Christ when he raised him from the dead. The Bible records the following account in 2 Kings 6 for our encouragement. Israel's enemies were so desperate to capture the prophet Elisha that they sent a great army with horses and chariots by night and surrounded the city where he was staying. 
when Elisha, when Elisha's servant woke up and saw this army, he despaired and cried out in fear. Parang tayo lang, di ba? What shall, what shall I do? Ano gagawin ko na, Lord? Di ba? So he, Elisha, answered, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And I pray that this is our prayer. Lord, open my eyes that I may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. So my dear sisters and brother, take off, uh, let's take, uh, take off our eyes off the enemy. Sometimes we are so enemy conscious na uh, may problema dito, may problema doon. Take off your eyes off for, for, from the situation, from the enemy, so you may see the exceeding greatness of God's power power working towards you because they are more than the they are more with you with us than against us ano yung pangalawa the hope of his calling it's not uh, uh the ando pa rin pala tayo sa hope of his calling hope of his calling it's not about what you do but who you are you are called to be king and a priest and from jesus the faithful witness the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Revelations 1, 5 to 6. Number two, this is your calling, my dear sisters and brother. You are called to live according to God's standards, not the world's standards. You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In 1 Peter 2.9, you are called to be as Jesus is today. Love has perfected among us in this, that we may, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. The thing is, once we have a revelation of how much, of how loved we are, we become bold. What is the definition of boldness? A believer who knows that he's so deeply loved. Yung pala yun. Because as he is, so are we in this world. So, Lord, let, let our eyes see of how much you love us, how much you care for us. It will, it will make you bold, you know. You are, so you are called to be as Jesus is today. Ano pa? You are called to live the abundant life. I have come that they may have, the, they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly to the overflow. This is the hope of your calling. Ano yung pangalawa? Okay. Gusto ko lang, uh, ba bago tayo pumunta dun sa susunod dun. In, you know, in Matthew 8, 17, in connection with the, with the calling, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah, the prophet saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. This is, this is our, um, this is our standing. Himself took our infirmities and bore our, our sicknesses. Yung pinaka, mag, yung pinaka uh, gusto ko yung emphasis doon, emphasize yung himself. You know, tapos ito, alam niyo ba yung colon? Ito ha, itakin niyo to ha, yung colon. You know in 1 Peter 2, 2.24, who himself bore our sins in his own body, on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. So yung result nung sacrifice ni Lord, Right? Uh, uh, his body being broken. His blood that was shed for, is for us to, to, be, to be made the righteousness of God in Christ. And by His stripes, you are healed. So, gusto ko lang balikan tong colon na. You know, yung colon, may nagtanong kasi sa akin ito nung colon. Ano ba yung colon? Para saan ba yung colon? Kasi ma marami kayong makikita ng colon sa <coughs> sa sa Bible. Actually, sa Psalms 23, meron eh. So yung colon, ang purpose niyan is for you to listen. To either share something you want to emphasize. You're saying something and you want to emphasize it. You put a colon and then you emphasize it. So parang ito, no? Um, uh, colon, he himself, he wants to emphasize himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. No, no hindi angel, hindi kung sino man, but himself. Yun yung colon. Ang ibig sabihin, pag nakakita ka ng colon, it's really to emphasize. So, pa, tayo to really look and to really listen. 
So whatever follows, you emphasize. Another thing is that whatever follows the colon will translate or give meaning to what goes before. In other words, for example, dun sa kaninang binasa natin sa 1 Peter, because you are living now, you are living as a righteous person, not your behavior, your new identity, you are now saying, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Now, you walk in righteousness, consciousness. Ah, so yung pala yung application ng colon. So this is the hope of your calling. As Jesus is righteous, so are you. And He Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. And by His stripes, you are healed. Ano yung second dun sa Ephesians? Yung, uh, that, that our eyes may be open. Yung una, di ba, hope of calling. And then yung pangalawa is um, yung inheritance natin, right? So as heir, as heir in the kingdom, you inherit all of the wealth and material possessions of your Abba. Salvation, health, protection, authority, and every good and perfect gift. As heir, your inheritance is limited to what your father possesses. Our father has limitless wealth and authority. As heir, you're limited to what he determines you get. Praise the Lord because the portion of our inheritance is determined by your benefactor and our benefactor owns everything. It is all the sundry of what belongs to Abba. To such an extent that you are made co-heir with Jesus, Romans 8.17, you receive all as Jesus is, so are you in this world. So in your riches of the glory of his inheritance. So our, our eyes be open to the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. In the saints. So now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them that he took, uh, uh, that he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him. So put na tayo dun sa ano ah, dun sa look twenty four in connection to the opening of the, opening of the eyes. So yung alam niyo yung new don is epigenosko. Okay, ano ibig sabi ng epigenosko? It means full or intimate knowledge or revelation. In other words, when they took the bread and ate it, their eyes were open to perceive who it really was in their midst. So I'm we're now discussing the two. Uh, disciples who were walking down the road of Emmaus. The Messiah they had followed who had brought healing, restoration, and life to so many and who had defeated death. Later, the two disciples spoke about the things that had happened on the road, particularly particularly how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Paano ma- ma-open yung eyes? It's, it's when, when you see this, ba? Now it came to pass as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened. So the communion, when we come to the table, our eyes will be open to what? Number one, to the hope of our calling. Number two, to um, the, the riches we have in Christ. So what is the bread that could cause uh, the two disciples to know Jesus? So, uh, ano ko uli dito, ha? yung Luke 24, 30. I- I- paste ko dito. Pero tingnan natin yung interlinear kasi gusto kong pasadahan tong ano, tong mga words dito kasi it's so full. Kanina habang habang um habang inaaral ko to, actually I was uh, uh I was very very touched kasi how the Lord loves us very much. Um and you you will see in the interlinear Luke 24:30 and it came to pass in the reclining of him with them. Having taken the bread, he blessed it and have and having broken. So para ano ha, yung tense ha, continue siya. So it's not like uh so meaning it's applicable. It's not like it happened 2000 years ago. But the the finished work of Jesus Christ is it's it's super present. It's like it's it's because he's the great I am, right? It's applicable to your situation now. Kaya tinamo yung tense, he blessed it having broken it, he began giving it to them. So, tingnan natin yung mga word, direct lining, bread, blessed it, having broken it, and having, uh, he began giving it. So, ano yung, ano yung, ano, ano yung um, uh, 1096? Ito yung ginomai. Ginomai is to, to, uh, to come into being, to happen, to become. Ito yan, eh. Uh, and it came to pass. Yan. Meron ba tayong mga inaantay na magmamanifest? Sinabi ni Lord dito sa Luke 20 sa Luke 24 it, it came to pass already. Inuna pa nga niya ito basahin na And it came to pass when it came to pass in the reclining. 
Yun yung ito yung magandang ito yung magandang phrase. Eh. It came to pass in the reclining. Paano daw magi-came to pass in the reclining? Aralin natin mamaya. So ano ba yung it came to pass? Ibig sabihin it it uh, to come into being, to happen, to become. Yan, so nang 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 uh, nangyari. So ano pa? Um becoming um signifies a change of condition as a state of a, uh, or a place, a manifestation implying motion, movement or growth. Yan. It came to pass in the reclining. Ayan na. You know yung reclining, no? Uh, um, you know the same the same word is he makes me lie down. Di ba reclining to make to make lie uh, to make to lie down to make to make to lie down. Yan. So it's it sounds twenty three all over again. So to cause to recline at the table, um, to recline at the table. Ano pa? Uh, it's it's uh, uh, made up of two words, kata and klino, to recline down and to take play to take a place at the table. Take your place at the table. Recline. How will it how will it come to pass? Your manifestation, rest. Recline, recline at the table. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Hallelujah. So, the, and this is all in the in the communion. Na eh? ano yon? Ano yung susunod? Bread. Dapat pala pinis ko yung buong ano. So, tingnan natin ha. Um, reclining of him with them, having taken the bread. Ayan. Having taken the bread, which is artos. Ito naaral natin before. And what what a blessing that we, we that we knew that artos, yung bread doon, is our divine provision. Ma, of course, first and foremost, wholeness and healing, especially for ourselves and for our for our family, for our friends who are sick. But actually, it's much more than that. It's all the sustenance God supplies to yielded believers, seen by seen to live His preferred will. Thelema, it's, it's His divine provision. The bread, His broken body, is our divine provision. What do you need? The bread is His divine provision. Hallelujah. And then, he, first, what did He do with the bread? He blessed it. So He spoke, he spoke good words. Anong ibig sabihin? Good words. To speak well of. To speak well of. To praise. To, uh, to be blessed. Properly to speak with uh, which con uh, uh, to, uh, to speak reason which confers benefit. Um, uh, in Greek word eulehio. God's blessing people and His people blessing Him. So it's um, uh, 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 words of grace. Right? Blessing. Right? Actually, by your stripes, I am here. That's most important. When you when you hold the bread, hallelujah. And then having broken classes, classes, uh, clao to break. Ayan. So to break. So th this I have a picture, right? The what is being broken? The the, the his his word, right? It's being broke as it is being broken. Now that we're doing it, at his broke as uh, at the, as it is being broken. But he's giving us portion for us to chew, and then another one for us to chew. Hallelujah. He feeds us with his word. Hallelujah. Having broke, kailan, kailan talagang the expounding of the word. Hindi pwedeng, uh, hindi pwedeng um, superficial lang. Kailangan i-break down para maintindihan, para natin ma-digest. Hallelujah. And then yung last, and he began after breaking. Right? After breaking, parang ginagawa na, eh, began giving it. So, pa, kasi pag hindi mabilaukan tayo. Right? So, yung sa Strong's Concordance, to give to give over, to give way. Epit, uh, epididomi. So, his, this is a picture of him really very generous. Him very, uh, very giving. He wants to give and give and give. And, and, and the thing that is left for us to do is to take everything. Take all. Hallelujah. So, the Lord has placed the Holy Communion on a divine ped pedestal and made it central. Shouldn't we emphasize what he put emphasis on? This is Pastor Prince asking. Now, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul, ready to depart the next day, spoke to them and continued this message until midnight. Parang, parang tayo lang to ah. <laughs> Nagbe-break bread and then study until midnight. So, it's most important. Actually, Sabi pa nga ni Pastor Prince, they didn't come to hear Paul first. They broke bread first uh, for each and every meeting. So it's not about, because it's not about um, 
in the study of the word, in the exposition of the word. Uh, it's not about how many chapters you have read. It's all about seeing Jesus. It's all about seeing Jesus in the communion. It's all about seeing Jesus in the elements. It's about seeing Jesus in each word um, that you read in the Bible. It's all about seeing Jesus in each word that you hear on this Bible study. And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all scriptures all the things concerning himself. That's why hindi tayo makakontento kung kung kunwari may naririnig tayo na uh, very, very very precious time. I, I don't I'm not saying na ano ah, masama magjoke ah. But pag masyado nang marami yung nagjo-joke, sayang oras. It must be expounded that the, the the pulpit is for the things concerning himself is for the exposition of things concerning himself. It's not about us us us. Our testimonies are good. But let's go back and, uh, and, and connect it to things concerning himself, right? And then the later, the two disciples said to, to each other, Did not our heart burn? Bakit isa lang? But heart lang. Isa lang, right? Isa, di ba? Because they were husband and wives. Uh, natakal na natin to dati, right? So God sees a married couple one. So did not our heart burn within us while he talked with us on the road and while he opened the scriptures to us? So every time we every time we feast on the word about himself our hearts will burn just like now. So it's it's the road to Emmaus experience all over again every Wednesday. So and because this is the this is the the thing this, this is the you, you, actually we were made we were made for this in John 17:3 and this is eternal life that they may know you. Ano yung gusto ni Lord? That we, that we may know Him. The only true God. Eternal life is not a location. Eternal life is not when you die, you go to heaven. No, eternal life, Zoe Ayanos, is that we may know Him. That we may know His heart. That we may hear, and, and sabi ni Doki kanina, and hear, uh, you know, uh, uh, recline in His bosom and hear His heart. The only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So, tingnan natin yung interlinear ng John 17.3. You know yung ginosko, yung know, that they may know you. Ginosko is to come to know, to recognize, to perceive. It's it's like to, to see with clarity, right? And it connotes um, being very, very intimate. Very, very intimate with your bridegroom and with Abba. It Actually, ginosko connotes sexual intimacy. As in with a man and a woman. So, just like just just like um, a man and a woman, just like also the shepherd and the sheep. You know, there's this book, Shinea uh, Kagabito ng Quire, by W. Philip Keller, yung book na A Shepherd, a shepherd Looks at Psalms, Psalm 23. You know, meron siyang insight doon na uh, uh, I was so blessed and I just want to share it with you. The strange thing about a sheep is that because of their very makeup, it's almost impossible for them to, to be made to lie down unless four requirements are met. Apat. Owing to their timidity, they refuse to lie down unless they are free of all fear. <coughs> Hindi pwedeng humiga to lie down pag natatakot. Because of the social behavior within a flock, Sheep will not lie down unless they are free from friction, may kaaway, <laughs> with, other, with others of their kind. If tormented by flies or parasites, sheep will not lie down. Only when free of this pest can they relax. So kapag may, may, may umaataking mga flies, right, and parasites, hindi, hindi sila titi, hindi sila magre-relax, hindi sila mag, magre-rest. Number four, lastly, sheep will not lie down as long as they feel in need of finding food, pag nagugutom, they must be free from hunger. Yan. Alam nyo, na ito yon. Fear, friction, flies, and famine. You know what? Hindi shiner kagabi, but, but I actually, uh, uh, actually, it's very much connected to the four horsemen. Yung fear, right? When you're very fearful, is you, don't, you, 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 you have embraced the false teaching. Right? When you when you're believing that your sins are not forgiven, that you still have to do it by your own performance, that the Lord doesn't love you, you're fearful. 
So anong sagot diyan? 'Di ba apostles teaching? Friction. Yung red horse, wars and rumors of wars. Um nagkakagalit ang mga kapatid, magka magkakamag-anak. Flies. Flies brings in sickness. 'Di ba? 'Di ba pag pag yung nilalangaw, 'di ba? Huwag mo nang kainin 'yan kasi magkakasakit ka. And then famine, yung ano, yung hunger, right? So ano yung ano diyan? Yung <laughs> talagang I was really amazed when I When I realized it, you know, Acts 2.42. The answer is the four pillars, Acts 2.42. For fear is the apostles' teaching. Because when you know, di ba? Eternal life is, eternal life is to know, right? So when you know, it's it's how? It's through the apostles' teaching. Friction, fellowship, right? Yung red horse. And then flies, sharing the meals, the Lord's Supper, pag may sakit. And then famine, prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, ganda no. So, I want to share this with you. This is a very personal um, revelation, actually, which um, I shared actually last night. I want to share with you the Psalms one to three in the Message version. God, my my shepherd, I don't need a thing. You have bedded me down in lush meadows. You find me quite pools to drink from. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. True to your word, you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Yung NKJV version is this. He restores my soul. He leads me, yung verse 3, He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. So you might, you can say that yung catching the breath is restoring of the soul and then after that is yung sending me to the right direction is he leads me in the paths of righteousness. So, you know that there's a verse in, um, so ito ha, yung, I want to emphasize yung catch, catch my breath. In John 20, 21 to 22, Jesus said to them, Peace to you. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. And when he said, to, and, and, and when he said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Anong ibig sabihin nung Irene? Ito mo ng peace. Peace in Hebrew is shalom. In Greek, it's Irene. Yung may mga pangalan na Irene. Ang ibig sabihin niyan ay peace. Quietness and rest. Yan. So in the Helps Word Study, um, it means to join, to tie together into whole. Again, it's to be one with Him. To be in Him. To be in Christ properly. Wholeness. When all essential essential parts are joined together peace it's god's gift of wholeness you in you you uh you or me myself um one with christ yun yung yun yung peace yun yung in revelation of uh shalom na lord i am one with you hallelujah as you are so am i and then who's who's the one who uh and then jesus the the the, the, the first time that um the holy spirit was given the holy spirit was breathed is um uh in the upper room in John 20 21 to 22 he breathed on them yan so kuntin na natin yung breathe yung breathe it's infosao to to breathe into or upon to breathe into or upon so the lord literally so anong anong response natin di ba to inhale di ba di ba parang yung kanta aba I belong to you. Parang ganon. So, Jesus breathe, 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 uh, breath it out to us. So, tayo, we breathe it in. Right? So, to breathe, breathe upon. So, yung sa helps or study, by breathing in, by breathing in, by breathing in Christ, in breathing, the promise of the Father, the promise of the Father. So, it's the Holy Spirit who, through His Word, uh, through His Word, um, uh, because it, yung one time breathing, right? When we receive the Holy Spirit, the Father breathed His Holy Spirit to us, right? But then there's such a thing as when we read His Word, when we 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 catch our breath. So the way we the way we catch our breath, ito dito. The way we catch the the way you and I catch catch our breath when we are weary, when we are tired, when we are fearful, the Lord is saying, catch catch. Catch your breath. Catch my breath. 
you let me catch my breath and send me in the right direction. Actually, it's his breath. How? How? Punta na tayo dun sa ano. How? So, ito yung sinabi ko kanina. Yung, yung kanta. How? 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. All scripture is God breathed. Theo Newtos, God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, training, discipline, and righteousness. The, the, the thing is, the Lord wants us to breathe in. Alin? To breathe in, to realize. Because it's, it, he already he already um, breathed his Holy Spirit. What what now when we what 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 is happening now when we listen to his word, when we read the scriptures, we are breathing in, we are breathing in, we are um we are being refreshed, right? To what? To what in the word of righteousness, in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. One story that um that can fully explain this is um the story of Paul. Um, remember during the time that he was um, um, uh, killing the saints in uh, in the in Acts, di ba? Pinatay nga niya si Stephen, and he was um, he was uh, asking for permission from the high priest, from the priest to uh, ba, to to kill all those Christians. Because you know what? He's reading in he, he's reading he's reading from the same book, huh? mind you. He's reading from the same Bible, but he's breathing in what? He's breathing in from the law. He's breathing in from the law. Iba. Iba. That's why yung bini-breathe out niya is hatred. It's murder. It's it's um killing. Ah. So when we breathe in the Lord, right? When we when we breathe in the word of righteousness, when we breathe in, when the Holy Spirit um, um teaches us and then um, um encourages us to breathe in, right? His word of righteousness, then we can breathe out. We can breathe out what? His peace. To this very fearful, to this very fearful, anxious world. Hallelujah. My dear sisters and brother, brothers. Ah, ito pala The word breathe is the, word, the same word in Genesis 2 when God breathed into Adam's body and made him a living soul. So my dear sisters and brothers, ano, anong gusto kong sabihin? Now, ako sa sarili ko, now that I have stopped Stop, Mer- ano ko eh, meron akong, uh, meron akong lag eh, meron akong um, from my, um, concerning my career. Now that I have stopped, ano yung, ano yung regulations sa akin ni Lord? And I think for you as well. Beloveds, catch your breath. We have to catch, we have to catch our breath. Catch your breath. Catch your breath. The breath that I made you to catch and to carry is my breath. How? By, by taking in His word. His word of righteousness, listening to His word. Catch, catch, catch His breath. To breathe in what I know is to know that I have set you at one with me. Again, to breathe in what I know, I want you to know that I have set you at one with me. And it is to know the peace and be a breather of peace. So that, my dear sisters and brother, is chapter um, well, but uh, uh, but before that, I want to share this song. See, I was so blessed um, 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 in connection to this Bible study, and I'm sure you will you're going to be blessed too. I was so blessed singing this song and meditating on this um, very old old song. Uh, I'm sure you know this, and you will be blown away. Yeah. 
Amen.